Well, my radio career gave way to another chapter in my life, and I really expected to be into full-time Christian broadcasting. You see, people think, well, you were a pastor, and then you got into politics. That was a real detour. Actually, the pastorate was my detour, because I was really expecting to spend my life doing broadcasting, and, and was. Worked for a large Christian organization out in Texas for a while, and I was director of communications and did radio and television and advertising. And then a church in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, asked me to come and fill in for them one Sunday, and I did. They asked me to come back and speak several nights during a Bible conference, and I did. Then they were without a pastor, and they asked me to be interim pastor, and I said, okay. And after about five months, they said, why don't you just stay? And I did. And that's how I became a pastor of a Baptist church in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Now, one of the reasons that it took them a while, I think they wanted to see, did I have more than one sermon? (laughs) They found out that I didn't, but they liked the one that I had, and they thought that they would let me just keep saying it until I finally got it right. I had six wonderful years there and then went to Texarkana, Arkansas and had six wonderful years there and in both communities not only did daily radio but I also created and started television channels for the community in each of those two communities. I've always had some hand in broadcasting and I never would have imagined that things would turn out that I would end up posting a television show on the weekends and now being on about 500 radio stations across the country every day doing three-a-day commentaries Monday through Friday uh, for the ABC radio network. My heart's always been in being able to use these wonderful mediums of broadcasting. And the reason that I'm thrilled about tonight being a part of this 25th anniversary for Faith Radio is because I know the impact that broadcasting can have. In fact, I, I've told many people I only could have wished that I could have had the broadcasting opportunity before I ran for president because it sure does seem like a lot more people know me from being on radio and television than ever knew that I ran for president a couple of years ago. (laughs) I started out no money, no name identification. It was a tough climb. I I would go to places, nobody knew who I was and even fewer people cared. Sad thing was by the time the campaign ended, then I would go places and, and people would start saying, oh, I I just want you to know I voted for you. And it was really kind of encouraging to me. You know, I'd get in an airport somewhere and be traveling to speak after the campaign had ended and doing a lot of traveling, still am, and all over the place people say, just want you to know, my wife and I, we voted for you. And like I said, this made me feel good until at some point it occurred to me that more people had come up and told me they voted for me than actually had voted for me in all the states put together in America. (laughs) Now, the one place that I really believe it's probably true is when I come to Alabama because the good people of Alabama were smart enough to support me during the campaign. And I want you all to know something. If the rest of America had been as smart as you guys, I might be up there saying no to some of this spending nonsense that Washington's got going on right now. But it really was amazing that people would come up and tell me that they voted for me. And and the other thing was that I had some people, they looked at me and they thought, I know this guy. I know this guy. And even to this day, some of them can't figure out, did I run for president or did I sell them a used car last year somewhere? (laughs) And I've had some amazing experiences where people will come up and, and a lot of times people will say, You're Mike Huckabee. I watch you every weekend. Uh, uh, You know, that's wonderful. But others will come up to me, and here's the question that I never have figured out why anyone would ask. Here it is. Are you who I think you are? (laughs) Like, do I know what you're thinking? (laughs) And it's such a ridiculous question that I started when people ask me this, are you who I think you are? I just start saying, you think I'm Brad Pitt, don't you? (laughs) Boy, it messes up their minds so bad. And they just look at me and say, no, uh uh-uh. Of course, every now and then, it gets turned around on me. This is a true story. I was in the Delta Airlines Crown Club, the little lounge that you sit at while you're waiting on long delays in your flight. And if you fly a gazillion miles, you get to go there. And I have enough miles for all of us to be there now. By the way, you know what Delta stands for? Didn't even leave the airport. That's what it says. So 
No, actually, I, I love Delta. <laughs> Probably some Delta people here. I love it. I'm on it every week. But I was in the Crown Room in, in Atlanta, and I'm in there so much that I know most of the people in that Crown Room now by first name, and they know me. And I was in there, and they were asking me to sign some stuff for their kids and nephews and nieces and have some photos. We were doing all that stuff. And the lady was in transit and traveling through, and she was there, and she was watching all this going on. I know what she was thinking. I don't know who that guy is, but he must be somebody enough that they want to have their picture made with him and have him sign stuff. So she walked over, true story, walked over and looked at me. She says, excuse me, are you Bob Dole? (laughs) Well, you thought it was funnier than I did. I looked at her and I said, lady... Bob Dole is 85 stinking years old. And she just looked at me like, oh. I never told her who I was. I wasn't going to give her the satisfaction of The only person who thought it was funnier than you guys was my wife, who thought that was the funniest thing she'd ever heard. That hurt my feelings a lot. Another moment similar to that, I was on a de- plane. It was a Delta flight coming out of Atlanta. This is back about a year ago. As people were coming down the aisle, they were coming down and saying, Hi, Governor. Good to see you. Good to have you on our flight. I voted for you. I bet you did. Yeah, right. <laughs> this guy was sitting next to me. I was in the aisle. He was in the center seat. He kept looking over there, and I could just see out of the corner of my eye him trying to figure this out. Now, who is this guy? Everybody calls him Governor. So either he was or he is a governor. Right guy to figure that out. And he must have run for something because everybody on the airplane voted for him. Except me because I don't know who it is. (laughs) And finally, after all these people had come by, he looked over at me. He said, hey, hey, man, I know who you are. I know who you are. You're Mitt Romney. (laughs) True story. (laughs) I've often thought if I'd had the notoriety then that I have had now, things might have turned out a little differently. But I enjoyed the campaign immensely. It was an incredible experience. And one of the things that made it most worthwhile for me was the chance to meet some of the greatest people in America. And I want to just share this with you because sometimes people say, when it was all over, did you have any regrets? Well, yeah. (laughs) I didn't win. (laughs) But other than that... (laughs) I had no regrets. I had the most magnificent experience of getting acquainted with America and realizing that no matter what you may be led to believe by watching some of the stories on television, on the nightly news, this is still a magnificent country with some of the most wonderful people on God's earth. And... I'm not at all encouraged about what's happening in Washington. I blame both Democrats and Republicans. I'm very frustrated. A lot of these ridiculous spending bills are as much the fault of Republicans as Democrats. And and I think that Republicans teed it up for the Democrats. And I'm not here to make a political speech, but I just want to say that in spite of all the things that are going on there, I am not giving up on America and I'm not giving up on the future for our kids and grandkids. Yes, I see peril and I see the troubles, but I'm also watching God raise up a whole new generation of people who because to be a Christian is going to mean something. And it means having to take a stand. 